that's just on 10 minutes at 5 amps I should turn it up to about 10 amps but these wires are pretty thin Let's get 10 amps for a couple of seconds or a minute or so see what happens see my unit's cracking oh oh ah there's a unit cut out 31 amps, what the hell? Looks like that. Hmm. What happened there? What happened there? That went up to 31 amps and stayed there. <laughs> I blew my unit. <laughs> Look back in and see what happens. Stayed on 31 amps. Whoops. Smoke coming out of these. Uh, one blow an electronic load, is it? Probably shorted out the MOSFET in there. Now let's see if my electronic load that truly is broken. I'll switch the power slide off. Get rid of the noise for now. There you go. See if this is stuck on 32 amps. I've got a bike battery instead of the power supply. Now, if that's stuck on 31 amps, this is going to give a big crack like an arc welder. Ready? I don't want to do this. Watch your eyes. So 61 amps. See that? <laughs> Do it again. Do it again. Crack. Hmm. I feel my load is broken. Yeah, get that in shot. Just a quick word about this before I discard it for now. I just seem there's got a great big MOSFET on there. That may be shorted out between these three pins. So let me give this part here a quick test. It's probably going to be a MOSFET or a transistor, that kind of thing. Let's have a look. Let the meters in diode mode. That's, I think, between drain and source. Short. Not a good sign, is it? That's probably what's gone. Let's have a look. Where's it hiding in the body of this? Uh, just about to see there. It's above the USB plug. Socket, whatever. It's underneath it. There's a big heat sink in there. That was easy. So disassembling these, just held on by these spring clips connecting to the to the base there, and to those. My thumb is. So try and see what this component is. Seems to have shorted. Can get it out. Can I straighten it? So we don't need any one anyway. What's it going to be? IRF something. You can't see it, I can't. IRFP264. Whatever that may be. Just doing an online search for that, see if we can get another part for it. I'm now going to go ahead and desolder this component off the board. These three pins here. Give that some fresh solder. Useful little tool, desoldering gun. Let's see if it cooperates. Get 
to melt the original solder in there. So blob of solder that, there you go, ha, <laughs> got it. Blob of solder that escaped down the board. Lots of heat to melt that. Solder that escaped. Uh, that, that's not wholly free on that. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. This time it hasn't, so I'll do that off camera. I eventually got it out. Not that easy. So we have some plated through holes or something there. It's eventually got out by using if I can get this out to the hole. It's one of these. Some holes in the bottom. That little tube. Come out with sacks like that, different size holes. Just application of heat on the on the shaft. While pressing it into the hole, these are stainless steel so the solder doesn't stick to it. Doesn't stick to it, if you me. Okay, so that's that. I'm just going to do a test on that before I go any further. I can just test this off the board. Because it was shorting on the board, let's see. Yep. Shorting in all three pins. You can actually see that fingers and thumbs are in the way, but trust me, they're all shorted. Okay. I wasn't going to buy a replacement for it. I had something in the parts bin. It's upside down. It is. These are fairly good make ones, I think. It's from RS. These are 26 amp ones with the original supposed to be supposed to be 38 amp. That one I had to give them the name at the beginning, but I forgot what it was now. What was it? IRFP264 38 amp. Replace it with a 26 amp. As long as I limit the current on that to about 20, that should be fine. I'll test that in a sec. Hold on. Before I stick this on the board, just give a quick test, just in case. All anti-static precautions, none. Okay, no shorts. No shorts. There'd be a tie between there probably. That's fine. I can go ahead and stick that on the board. This ready to get, be soldered now. I've pre bent the legs on that, as you can see. Oops, if you can see, yeah. Just make sure that it's going to lie flat, flat on the board, and more importantly, flat on the other side on the heatsink. I'll clean that and put some fresh paste on that. I'll solder that up and see if it works first. I'm just going to give this a quick load test before putting it all back together. It's showing the voltage, it's fine, see that? Let's give it a little, and it's more important it goes on zero amps. Yeah, 0.65 amp, fan comes on. No 30, 50 or 60 amps like it was before. Well, I replaced that. Okay, let's put it back together. And a little blob of thermal paste on there. If that can be seen. Heating paste. Up to 
cleaned off the bottom there's all the residue of the old stuff I'll put that back together off camera I think I'm hoping I've got the fan on the right way around It'll suck not blow and that's back together not too bad don't remember where these wires go I'll have to tuck them in later to give it a test and the fans blowing this side I've got it the right way around this probably has to be the other way around suck blow oh well never mind it does the same thing let's, let's give some current yeah that's fine for now so I'm going to leave this off and let the heat and compound cure and I believe that's it job done fixed all for the price of one end channel MOSFET if I found that useful good stuff as always feel free to buy me a kebab <laughs> <laughs>